lovely people out there on your computers. Today we're going to talk about feelings, or more specifically, how your body makes feelings happen with hormones. This video does contain discussion of menstruation, so if you're not cool with that, I think you should probably broaden your perspective. Because it's a really important, very misunderstood, very stigmatized, fascinating biological process, and the social stigma placed on it really, really harms women's health and access to equality. That's a topic that I expand upon in the video's description, or if you're on Scilogs in the little blurb below this video, and you should really go read it. Okay, first of all, what is a hormone? A hormone is a signaling molecule produced by a gland in a complex animal like a human that can travel long distances throughout the body to affect things like physiology and behavior, like sleep regulation, growth and development, metabolism, reproduction, and the topic of today's video, mood. Hormones in humans and other complex animals travel via the bloodstream, and each one has a specific shape and chemical structure that binds to a certain receptor. These receptors are only on specific cells that correspond to the hormone they're supposed to be affected by, so when a hormone gets released into your whole bloodstream, it doesn't affect every tissue, it just affects the things that need to be changed. So let's talk about the two hormones that we're probably the most familiar with, estrogen and testosterone. So typically, and it's important to remember that this is not the case for every human, but male-bodied people typically have more testosterone than estrogen, and female-bodied people typically have more estrogen than testosterone. These two hormones are known as the primary sex hormones because at puberty, human bodies start to produce one or the other in large amounts, and individuals of different sexes start to differentiate from each other physically. At the onset of puberty, female-bodied people's ovaries start to produce lots of estrogen, and male-bodied people's testes start to to produce lots of testosterone. But the question is, what are they doing to our brains? Estrogen actually increases the levels of serotonin and serotonin receptors in our brains, and also modifies the production and processing of endorphins, or those chemicals that make you feel good. This is because with the rise in estrogen in female-bodied people, our brains are starting to change to be able to care for young and attach to them. And all of that attachment is fueled by feel-good hormones in our brains like oxytocin. Now, Testosterone affects the brain differently, with higher levels of testosterone being linked with higher levels of aggression and sexual activity, and lower levels of testosterone being linked with depression and lethargy. Both male and female body people have both estrogen and testosterone, just higher levels of one than the other. So let's talk about something called moodiness. So someone can be accused of being moody if they're behaving differently than they usually do, if they're extremely irritable or easily upset. But often, moodiness is verbalized as a gendered trait. One of my favorite comments is if someone asks if a woman is on her period, if she's expressing a concern or being outspoken. So I'd like to take a quick second to debunk this myth about hormones and feelings. Yes, a woman's hormones do cycle throughout the month with a drop in estrogen and other hormones around the time of her period. The first half of a female-bodied person's monthly cycle is associated with elevated mood and energy, and the latter half with just the opposite. Although it's important to keep in mind that everybody's cycle is different, everybody's hormones are different, so this does not apply to everyone. But men's hormones do exactly the same thing. Let me repeat that. Men's hormones also cycle monthly. Of course, this cycling of hormones has nothing to do with the shedding of a uterine lining, but symptoms of high levels of testosterone, a spike that occurs every month for most male-bodied people, can be associated with frustration, anxiety, irritability, and hypersensitivity. Sound familiar? Additionally, women's hormonal profiles when they are on their period, higher levels of testosterone and lowered levels of estrogen, are closer to male hormonal profiles than they are at any other time of the month. So those who say that women are totally irrational and difficult to deal with when they're on their period, interesting you should say that! These are really important things to think about when treating women like equals, and not trivializing or devaluing the things that they're thinking and feeling. These facts are also really important to draw on now that we're having more women in positions of power, and their opponents say that they're not going to be good leaders because they're hormonally unstable. It's just not true. Everyone's hormones cycle. Everyone's a little bit crazy sometimes. Get over it. And for those trolls in the comments who I know are going to ask, no, I'm not on my 
Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more awesome science facts weekly and feminism and women in science and awesome adventures like that. You can follow and like Lunchbox Science on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you're curious as to why during the video I was using words like female-bodied and male-bodied, that's because not everybody is born into the body that they feel like they should be. So someone could have technically what we would call a female body, but may not necessarily feel like a female and might not want to be called a woman. So I think it's important to differentiate what someone's body is and what they really are. Just something to keep in mind whenever you're talking about gender or sex. If you have any more questions or comments, let me know down in the bottom and send me questions so I can answer them. Okay, bye.